Okay, okay, I'll build the website again. What's up guys, Jason here, Sparring Entrepreneur, and welcome to episode 42 of Building an Online Business from Scratch, where previously I was showing you how to put together an online webinar sales funnel, and season one is done, we are complete with that. I showed you everything I did, and now, I pretty much had to scrap it all and start all over, right? <laughs> Just kidding. So not completely starting over, but today is kicking off kind of the next round, the next phase, if you will, of building a digital business. And that goes and pretty much always starts with your website, right? If there's one thing that I found every single person who wants to start a business, one of the first five things on their list is building a website. And one of the big things I want to talk to you today is specifically, number one, how you can pretty much put together the perfect website you need for your business, whatever you're doing, in less than an hour. I'm, I'm going to say less than 30 minutes, like 30 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, you know, whatever is great for a YouTube uh, description and uh, title, but uh, really 15, 30 minutes, an hour max, whatever plugin you're using done, right? The only three pages you need for your website. And I'm dead serious. The only three pages you need, arguably you get away with two, but I just added the third one because I know you're going to ask me and I know you're going to harp on me in the comment section below. So I added the third one just for you. So uh, before we dive into those particular things, I just want to start off the bat by saying this is not going to be a in-depth tutorial about WordPress or uh, a specific theme. I have chosen WordPress to be my platform for now. However, uh, earlier this morning when I was putting together the video for you guys, I was actually going to do a in-depth review of the theme that I th chose until I did my Google performance test and I got this. So uh, that is awful. That's actually worse than, that's one of the worst scores I've ever gotten and this theme was supposed to be really fast and really helpful, compressed all my images, had very little on my homepage. So this is what my current homepage looks like and you'll notice it looks a little funny and that's because I've optimized it or I was trying to optimize it for mobile. But as in the screenshot you just saw, didn't work out too well. So that's a quick tidbit right off the bat. When you're looking at your site design, think about that tiny screen, right? Stop thinking about the desktop. When people go to your website on your desktop, they're just going to see a bunch of extra blank, some extra blank space. They're not going to care. When someone goes to your website on their mobile device and everything's all bleh, they're really going to care. So make sure it's nice and fluid, nice and fast for mobile. And when someone comes to your site from desktop, they're just going to go, oh, this is kind of a minimalist site or, oh, this is kind of a plain site. But you know what? At least it works, right? So diving in, the three pages that you need. You need your homepage. You need your blog page. And because I know you're going to ask, you need a product. You can have a product page. Number three is definitely, definitely optional. And these three pages tie into the only three things your main website needs to do. Okay. I know it's going to be weird. You're going to be like, Jason, what do you mean? I'm going to have a website that just has a link to my blog and like a notice. I didn't even say about me page, but we'll get to that in a second. You have a link to your website. It's just a homepage and a blog. Like, right? Yeah, that's literally, that's all you need to be successful. So what are those three things your website should do? Number one, answer the question, who are you and what do you do for me? Number two, deliver valuable content that solves a problem your audience has. And then number three, grab that email and name. That's it. One, two, three. That's it. One, two, three. That's it. So who are you? Why do I care? Not who are you and about me and all that fun stuff. No, 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 no. Who are you? Why do I care? What can you do for me? Okay. Remember your site isn't actually about you. It's about your customers and it's about your audience. So who are you and why the heck should I not even taking it a step further from why should I care? What do you do for me? Then deliver valuable content right off the bat and then grab that name and email. And that's it. So how does this break down in terms of your pages? Now, make sure you stick around because at the end of the video, I'm going to be going through some great examples from Mike Dillard, Frank Kern, Lewis Howes, Remit Sethi, and one other, Neil Patel. So I'm going to go through how all of these guys are doing exactly what I'm talking about here. So I'm not just talking out of my butt. Like this is literally, these are tactics that the big, great marketers are of today are using, just in case you don't know who 
all those random name drop people are. So we'll go ahead and go into your homepage. Now, your homepage can be formatted in several different ways. We'll go through an example, but essentially your homepage answers that first question, who are you and what can you do for me? And then your homepage funnels them into something that's going to either deliver content or grab their name and email. Now you can actually do uh, number one and number three on the first page. So normally I'm gonna put a, up the prime example here. I'm gonna be using Frank Kearns as we go through this because he does all of them actually in the sequential order. It's really, really ninja how he does this. But essentially the front, front and center, this is who I am and this is what I could do for you. There's this big benefit driven headline and it says, this is what I can do for you. Enter your name and email. And so if someone's looking at it, they go, yeah, okay, I don't really know. Let's see, what else you got, okay? So when they scroll down, that's pretty much saying, oh, what else you got? So they scroll down to the next section of the homepage, which would be something in the effect of content. Now, Frank Kern isn't the only one who does this. Gary Vaynerchuk does this also, where as soon as you scroll down above the fold, if you don't take that initial call to action, bam, hits you with some content right up front because you are trying to deliver value. You don't want people going clicking to, oh, about you, that you don't want them looking at your prices. You want to be delivering value to them up front. You wanna be starting that relationship with the value squarely centered on you. So you started with, hey, I can do this for you. Enter your name and email if you want me to do it. And if they go, eh, no, I don't really think so. I don't really know you yet. You scroll, you can either scroll down, you can either go straight into content or you can go into a little bit about you and then back to content again, right? So we're gonna keep scrolling down Frank Kern's page here just cause it's such a great example. And here you have, here's the content portion, here's your blog. So I'm gonna focus on the blog for a little bit because this is something that I think is so simple and yet we just overcomplicate it because we think there's more to it. The only purpose your blog serves is to cement you, your company or your client, your whoever you're doing this for as a authority in your space. That's it, okay? So it cements you as an authority. So how do you get cemented as an authority? You solve a problem. That's, that's all there is to it. Your blog post solves a problem because by solving their problem, your audience is going to look at you or your company or your client as the go-to authority on that person because, uh, on that some person, on that subject because you just solved their problem pretty nifty, right? So that's really all a blog is. That's all your blog posts are. And then at the bottom of your blog post, guess what? You ask, you say, hey, this was some great content. Maybe you want it in PDF form. Maybe you want a little Excel sheet that helps you do X, Y, Z. Maybe you want a free webinar. Maybe you want a video series that dives into how to do this other thing that you're probably interested in as well. All right, so whatever that is, each blog post should end with a call to action. Now, disclaimer, if you go to my website, I'm still setting that up, right? And I'm still trying to find a really good uh, plugin that will allow me to do things. Because right now I'm using something called Bloom, but it's just slowing down my site way too much. So I gotta figure that out. But anyway, so not logistic, logistics not figured out, but that's why you subscribe, right? You hang out and I'll figure it out for you. So there you go, there's the blog. And then finally, there's the kind of about me, what can you do for me type thing. And really you're just giving them another chance to get to know you a little better. And so there's multiple sites that do this at the bottom. Now there's two ways you could do this. Personally, I have a video on my homepage that is essentially an introduction to this series and just says, hey, I'm Jason and this is what I'm doing. I think it'd be really cool if you subscribed to me on YouTube and entered your name and email and stuff and we can hang out and figure out this online business thing together. Now, obviously you're gonna take a lot more time and mental thought into coming up whatever your message is. So it can be a video or as you see Frank Kern here, it's a, another little paragraph just about him and then it says, you know, learn more. Now, here's the big tip I have for you in this video. Instead of having that learn more button, go to an about me page, just have the about me page a blog post, please. It'll save you so, so much time because with the about me page, again, it's not about you, it's about your customer. So you tell your story and through your story, you explain how you can be helpful to the customer, how maybe you've helped other people tackle the problems your customer has, or how maybe you used to have the problem your customer has and now you've overcome it. And that's what you do on that about me section. And that that is a blog post, right? And then at the end of the and the, the end of the about me, what do you do? 
you have a call to action. Maybe it's work with me. Maybe it's contact me. Maybe it's copy paste my cool template for doing X, Y, Z that has to do with the problem you talked about in your about me section, right? But there you go. So after all of that, I've gone through all of that and you've done all of that by just setting up two pages on your website. So again, the purpose of this video is number one, to prove to you that you just need two pages. You really don't need that third one. I'll get to it, but you really don't need it. And then number two is it's going to save you so, so much time and headache setting up a beautiful immaculate site. Now, if you want to see a cool site, I know I did a little scroll through of it earlier, but you can go to lewishouse.com or you can just look at this 30 second B-roll and see like, this is what a beautiful, just beautifully done website looks like that he probably, that he paid at least five or six grand for, no joke. So unless you have five or six thousand dollars and you've already got a brand that you say, yeah, it's worth spending that much money on a website for, and you want something to look this good, then you can ignore this video. Everybody else, and I'm serious about that five or $6,000 thing, I'm dead serious. Everybody else who, number one, thinks they can go to Fiverr or Upwork and get the same quality, number two, thinks that, oh, it's not really gonna take that much time, or number three, thinks that, oh, they, I can just figure it out myself, you are gonna be wasting a lot of your time because I'm here to tell you, um, we're on episode 42 here, so I've learned a thing or two about falling flat on my face. I'm here to tell you that the number one skill that you need to hone is communication, right? Whether that's sales copy or content, your the content on your blog, those are the two things that are going to matter the most when you're building your business. It's not gonna be how pretty your website. It's not gonna be having the most cutting edge, you know, graphics here or there, right? It's gonna be having a website that loads fast, having two pages that have very simple very simple images and, you know, do JPEGs, not PNGs, you know, compress your images if you can, blah, 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 blah. Uh, we'll do other videos on that. But when you focus on these three things, who are, who are you and what can you do for me, delivering valuable content and then asking for their name and email, you, you cut down the time it takes to put together your website. And when you cut down on the time it takes together to put together your website, yes, it doesn't look super cool, right? It's plain Jane. Look at mine. It's plain Jane. Here's some more pictures. It's plain Jane. It's nothing special, but you know what? People aren't coming to look at a bunch of pretty pictures, unless you're a photographer, then, you know, do pretty pictures, right? But that's, that's kind of your, your content. What you're focusing on is your content. So instead of spending two or three months putting together this great website, spend two or three months learning how to copyright, learning how to write email copy, uh, learning how to put together an email sequence, learning how to write a blog post that people actually want to read, learning how to write headlines, you know, playing with uh, growing your social media audiences, all these things that are infinitely, infinitely, infinitely more important than you pulling an all-nighter playing with WordPress. Okay, so hopefully uh, I haven't lost, well, actually analytics tells me most of you are gone by now, but for those of you who are left, I will talk about number three now. I will talk about number three. And number three is if, okay, number three is if you already have a product or service, it's completely done. You're not building anything, okay? If you're still putting together your info product or you're not already selling your service or your product, this, this page won't matter. But if you are already in that profit mode, then the third page can be a product sales page. So that sales page sells your product or service. And of course it has that little pricing table at the bottom if you want, or it has you know the order now button. So that would be the only third page that I would actually link to on your site. Now remember, I'm not talking about landing pages, sales pages, you know, webinar, your webinar pages or your download pages. All of those are kind of in the background. They're not linked on your site. And it's really important to remember that when someone comes to your site, you want to funnel them into actions you want them to take. And so you want to answer all their questions, right, while still funneling them. Because if you just had a squeeze page that says, oh, like if you just took like Frank Kern's top and you just said, there's your homepage. Well, you're not gonna answer a lot of questions that people have about you, what you can do for them, solving their problems, so they're just gonna bounce, right? So we have to add some extra content, some extra value for them to 
take the action we want, which is number three, right? We want them to enter their name and email because once we have their name and email, that's when you can start that sales process. That's when you can actually start building a relationship with them, but you don't want to try and do all that stuff until you have that name and email. So your homepage site is essentially pushing you up as an authority and then delivering valuable content, pushing you up as an authority even higher and of course solving their problems. And the more problems you solve, the more of an authority you are going to look at and that's it. All right, so I'm gonna jump into my screen here. So what we're looking at here is first we have Mike Dillard's page and this is a, this is a good kind of compromise between what, well I shouldn't say compromise, this is a good in between between, you know, Lewis's house, super, fancy branded style and Frank Kern's very plain, streamlined, simple, let's let's get a subscriber. So uh, what I really like about his page, you can see up front, there's the big benefit statement, name and email right off the bat, right? He's still asking for the name and email. And then instead of going in the content, he jumps straight into who am I and what can I do for you? So that's his about me. He reinforces that by having testimonials and then he goes into his content. So you can see here, my company, my affiliations, these are all content, right? Some of these are content and some of these go to kind of sales sales pages or other websites. And it's just a more and more all about him and here's what I can do for you and here's why you should listen to me. I have all these great things that you can click on that you can go check out, content, 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 right? He's giving people avenues to become more acquainted with him and his brand and what he really cares about. And then again, at the end, he finishes up with another about me. So it's he's he's very heavily focused on the who am I and what can I do for you uh, as opposed to the content, but he's still got the content piece in there and he still starts off with asking for the name and email. So I, I hope you start to see the pattern here. So the next one is a little different, right? This is Neil Patel's. He starts off, here's my benefit, here's what I can do for you. And then he goes, here's what I can do for you again. And then he goes, here, ask, ask for the name and email. And then in the bottom, he has, you know, blog, tools, consulting. And then again, there's the three, he has the about page. And so this is something that you can do if you really wanna be, really wanna be simple. But unless you already have the brand recognition that Neil Patel does, I think you should go with a more content center, content focused one because you do need to deliver a little more value than he delivers on his homepage. But again, this is for a specific webinar and product that he's selling. And of course, then we have, uh, I will teach you to be rich. You can see again, same format. Instead of the about me or what I can do for you, he and his credibility is all of these little logos here essentially saying, I'm important because I've been on all these great uh, networks and platforms. And so you can see he starts off with his, his big benefit statement. Here's how I can help you. He asks for your name and email, and then he says, I'll teach you. And then here's his content. His links go, here's what I can do for you. And if you click on them, you go to the content, right? And then again, he asks one more time for the name and email. So he definitely focuses on those two out of the three that I was really talking about. Of course, you can go to his you know about me section if you want. So thank you for watching. I hope you found this video informative and actionable. If you got some value out of this video, you know, the business and marketing tactics and strategies we just covered here, go ahead and hit that like button and then subscribe because over on my YouTube channel, I'm going from A to Z and everything in between it takes to build a digital marketing machine for whatever type of business you have in this particular series, I'm documenting the process of putting together an online webinar sales funnel, but that is really just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to building a business. And then of course, after you hit that subscribe button, go ahead and comment with any questions you have about the three keys to what needs to be included in your website. And then if you have any technical questions on like what WordPress theme should I use or what should I do if you know my site kind of sucks right now and how do I revamp it type stuff, definitely drop a comment there and I do respond to every single comment. Love to handle your guys's questions. So make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe and like button and I will see you next week in the next episode. So until then, keep building the business you love. Take care.